came in a journey from slavery to freedom. Uh, last week we looked at Abraham, amen, and, and him getting ready to uh, kill Isaac, amen, and how Isaac's story is our story, that God has provided uh, a substitution to die in our place, amen, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and as we just continue to kind of lay down the story of the Bible um, in conjunction with the mini series, amen, uh, I, I did get to see some of uh, last week's, amen, I didn't look at it all because I fell asleep. Hey, praise God. Amen. <laughs> so uh, I will continue looking at that today and then hopefully catch up uh, for next week. Amen. And today we're going to be talking about Rahab. Amen. Rahab is uh, very interesting, and, and uh, in some respects, uh, our story should identify with her story. Amen. And 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 it is it's really amazing uh, that God chooses to use uh, those people who we may not choose for ourselves to amen. use. Amen. If we were God, uh, let the truth be told. Amen. If we were God, we probably wouldn't even choose ourselves uh, to be used. Amen. Uh, but God looks past us. Amen. And he uses uh, willing vessels. Amen. So we want to start off with just showing a clip from the series tonight. Amen. As we dive into before we dive into our text. Amen. What we want to do is just lay down the story of the Bible, uh, which is the story of redemption in Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, the reality is uh, we are all in, in some respects uh, slaves. Amen. Who need to be freed. Amen. There are many things in our lives that can enslave us. Amen. That we need to be free from. Amen. The Bible says that uh, who the son has set free is free indeed. Amen. Amen. So once Jesus has set us free, we are free. Amen. First of all, I want us to realize that we often find uh, we often find ourselves identified in life by what we been through. Amen. In, in life, we often find ourselves identified by what we've been through. Amen. Let's begin by looking at Joshua chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Now Joshua, son of Nun, sent out two men from Achaia Grove to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and came to the house of the harlot named uh, Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come, uh, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out or to spy out all of the country. Uh, may God add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his word. We, we often find ourselves identified in life by what we've been through. Jericho. This is the first city that uh, the children of Israel approach as they cross over the Jordan. Amen. It's the first city in the land of Canaan uh, that they will conquer. It's quite interesting because Jericho, uh, although it is strategically a very brilliant, brilliant choice of city, amen, uh, but uh, it's also probably the most difficult city to overtake, amen, and I believe God was leading them to take the biggest foe down so that everybody else would be terrified of what the children of Israel could do, amen. Jericho is a city that, that could not be defeated, amen, but but. Military-wise, it was a very intelligent choice because once they conquered Jericho, the rest of the land, amen, would not be nearly as difficult, amen. But we have in our story today Rahab, who seems to be a very strange choice for God to use yeah. to help the children of Israel. Yes. Uh, the Bible addressed her as the harlot or the prostitute, amen, uh, in the town, amen. Uh, very unlikely choice. Uh, again, like I said earlier, many of us probably would not have chosen the prostitute to help uh, God's people. Amen. And we can dress it up however we like, but uh, that's how 
most of our stories actually begin. Maybe not as a prostitute, but as a sinner of one uh, of one kind or another. Yeah. Amen. Uh, the Bible tells that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God in Romans 3 and 23. Jesus said, uh, truly I say to you, truly, truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin in John chapter 8 verse 34. And your sin may seem more respectable than mine or somebody else's, but it is still sin and it is still slavery according to Jesus. Amen. You may not be a prostitute, but we are often identified by our sins. Amen. We may have some people, amen, in our family who are known as such and such the drunk or, or such and such the crackhead or, or such and such the liar or such and such the thief. Amen. They may have a name for you. Amen. That you don't even know what they call you. Amen. But but uh, our, our lives are, are we often find ourselves identified in life by what we've been through. The Bible calls Rahab the prostitute. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and as we just really uh, as uh, later as I just really look at her whole life is very interesting because even uh, in the book of Hebrews when it talks about uh, those faithful Old Testament saints, it still address her as Rahab, the prostitute. Amen? Although that she did not continue to be a prostitute, the Bible often identifies her by her past. Amen? And ourselves are often identified by our past. Amen? Even yeah. when we come to Christ and accept Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior, some people often and will still look at us by how we used to be. Yeah. Amen? We may not be a liar anymore, but they may still address us as a liar. We may not be a crackhead anymore, but they'll still address us as a crackhead. We may not be an alcoholic anymore, but they'll still address us by how we used to be or the sins that we were once entangled into. And we often find ourselves in life identified by what we've been through. Amen. But the journey of this life for the believer is a journey from slavery to freedom. Are you with me, church? Amen. Secondly, church, there is a choice that will redefine our lives. There is a choice that will redefine our lives. And we find this in Joshua chapter 2, verses 4 through 14. And let me read that for us. It says, Then the woman took the two men and hid them. So she said, Yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. And it happened uh, as the gate was being shut, when it was dark, that the men went out. Uh, where the men went, I do not know. Pursue them quickly, for you may overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof and hidden them with, uh, uh, with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order on the roof. And the men pursued them by the road to the Jordan, to the uh, fords. And as soon as those who pursued them had gone out, they shut the gate. Now before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the terror of you has fallen on us and all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water on, uh, of, uh, of the Red Sea uh, for you uh, when you came out of Egypt. And, and, and what uh, you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, uh, uh, Sihon uh, and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Now therefore I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you also will show kindness to our father's house, uh, to my father's house, and give me a true token. And spare my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. So the men answered her, our lives for yours, if none of you tell 
this business of ours. And it shall be when the Lord has given us the land that you will uh, you will be de uh, uh, dealt. Uh, you will deal kindly. Uh, we will deal kindly and truly with you. Amen. There is a choice that will redefine our lives. Rahab faced a decision. Uh, she could have turned the spies away and not allowed them to come into her house. She could have turned them in when the guards came looking for them. She did not have to help them, amen, get out of the city and hide from the guards. The safe choice would have been to stay out of the line of fire and give them up. Yeah. But given a choice between the side of the Lord and the other side, she chose the Lord's side. Amen. Do you know our God is a God who specializes in setting the captives free? Yes. You remember the story of, of Joseph, amen, and how he was sold into slavery by his brothers, amen, and he goes into Potiphar's house and, and, and is accused of raping Potiphar's wife and is thrown into prison and ultimately Joseph ends up as second in command of all Egypt, amen? Amen. Amen. Man, uh, God not only got him out of slavery and out of prison, he made him second in command of all Egypt. Amen. Amen. God specializes in setting the captives free. Amen. We get into this part of, uh, of the children of Israel's history because some 40 years ago they had came out of slavery out of Egypt. Amen. And God is still setting the captives free. Amen. You may not be enslaved physically, but spiritually sin can and enslave us all. Are you with me, church? Yes, yes. So uh, there is a choice that will to redefine our lives. We have to choose the Lord's way. We have to choose the Lord's side. And when we choose the Lord's side, it will redefine who we are. Amen? Amen. Rahab may have been known as the prostitute in Jericho. Amen. And she may often be referred to even after, amen, Jericho is defeated and she goes with the children of Israel. She may still be referred to as Rahab the prostitute, but her relationship with the Lord was established. Amen. And she was never the same again. Amen. Prostitute is what she used to be. Amen. And prostitution is what she used to do. Amen. But there is a choice that she had to make that would redefine her whole life. Amen. As a prostitute, she may have been working to take care of her family. Amen. As best as she could. Amen. But the reality is, is that God didn't want her to stay that way. Amen. And she had to accept, amen, the fear of God and side with the people of God to become who God wanted her to be. Are you with me, church? Church. So not only will we find ourselves identified by what we've been through, and, and not only do we have a choice that will redefine our lives, but our lives can be set free by the choices we make. Amen. Our lives can be set free by the choices we make. Let's look at Joshua chapter 2, beginning at verse uh, 15. It says, then she let them down by a rope through the window. For her house was on the city wall. She dwelt on the wall. And she said to them, go to the mountains, lest the pursuers meet you. Hide there three days until the pursuers have returned. Afterwards, you may go your way. So the men said to her, we will be blameless of this oath of yours, which you have made us swear. Unless when we come into the land, you bind this line of scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you bring your father, your mother, your brothers and all of your father's, uh, your father's household to your own home so that it shall be that whoever goes outside the doors of your house into the streets, his blood shall be on his own head and we will be guiltless and wherever and whoever is with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head if our hand is laid on him and if you tell this business of ours, then we will uh, we will be free from your oath which you made us swear. 
Then she said, according to your words, so be it. And she sent them away and they departed and she bound the scarlet cord in her window. Our lives can be set free by the choices that we make. Rahab's story is the story of a prostitute who faced a choice that she had to make. She had to choose one side or the other. She had to choose God's side above all else. She had to choose between sin and salvation. She had to choose between slavery and freedom. Let's look at what happens ultimately in Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6, verses 20 through 25. Amen. It says, so the people shouted. This is, this is when the walls of Jericho are ready to fall. Amen. So the people shouted when the trumpets, uh, uh, so the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both men and women, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said to the two men who had spied out the country, go into the harlot's house from there, the, uh, from there. Amen. And from there, bring out the woman and all that she has as you swore to her. And the young men who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought out all her relatives and left them outside uh, the camp of Israel. But they burnt the city and all that was in it with fire, only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and arms they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua spared Rahab, the harlot, her father's household and all that she had. So she dwelt in Israel to this day because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. She not only found a place of acceptance among God's people, but she became the great grandmother of King David, from whose royal line Jesus, the Messiah, would come. Amen. That's quite a journey from being Rahab the prostitute to Rahab the, the, the great ancestral grandmother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And God will take us from slavery to freedom if we choose his way. Amen. Rahab chose the way of God above the life that she was living. Amen. The life that she was living was taking her nowhere. Amen. All she would ever be known in her life in Jericho is Rahab the prostitute. But when presented with a choice to accept God, amen, in his side, she chose God and it redefined her life. Amen. God will do the same for us. Amen. When we make the choice, when we make the decision to accept Jesus Christ as both our Savior and our Lord. Amen. He didn't just die on the cross to save us, but he wants to be Lord of our life as well. Amen. And when we do that, it redefines who we are. Amen. And I, you know, I, I preached a sermon a little while back when people can't get past your past. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And what I tell us, we need to just kick the dust off our feet and keep on stepping. Amen. I can't, I can't be worried about how other people see me. I have to know how God sees me. Amen. Amen. I have to know that I've been set free. I have to know that I've been delivered. I have to know that I'm an overcomer, an overcomer and that I have the victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Sin, although we still battle with sin after we become saved, sin does not have the final say-so. 
And as a believer, we should be trying and working and depending on God to deliver us from those sins in our life, even after we get saved, because we shouldn't stay wrapped up in sin after we've been saved. But God has given us everything we need to come out of those evil, uh, uh, sinful practices that we used to do, amen, that define who we used to be. God sees us as a new creation and says the old has passed away and behold the new has come. I'm not the same person that I used to be. Yeah. Amen. And I'm not perfect. I haven't arrived but I'm not the same. I've been changed yeah. by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. The scarlet thread represents the salvation that Rahab would, would have. Amen. And it's not by accident that it's red because it's to point us to Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is the mark. Amen. That saves us. Amen. His blood that was shed on Calvary's cross saves us when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. When we ask him for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. It's not by accident. Amen. And that same scarlet thread is just woven all through out the history of the children of Israel and reappears on Calvary's cross in the form of Jesus' blood being shed for us. Amen. It, it, it's, you know, again, even looking at the miniseries, I see so many inaccuracies, amen, and I, I'm not getting caught up in that because I'm looking at the storyline, amen, and how it's all leading up, how the stories in the Bible, amen, as I said last week, I don't like to necessarily call them stories, amen, but they are accounts, they are actually things that happen, amen, they're real, they're not fairy tales, they're not myths, amen, but, but, but they're not isolated incidents, and, and God has connected, amen, those stories in the Bible together to show us his plan of salvation, which is realized in Jesus Christ. And he, God is still taking us from slavery to freedom. Amen. Not because of us, but in spite of us. Y'all just don't know. As we stand today, amen. This journey is a continual journey. As long as we have breath in our body, we still have a work to do. Amen. God still wants us to be delivered from those things in our life that entangle us. Amen. Which are not of him. Amen. Amen. He still wants to set us free. As the Bible says, who the son has set free is free indeed. 